All right, folks, I got a good one for you tonight. This is a uh, inline water heater I'm building. And let me just go ahead and give credit to someone else. It's not my idea, but I think it'll work. Um, what we've got, this is a electric heating element for a water heater, for an electric water heater. And I believe this one is, uh, I wanna say 5,500 watts. I believe, I don't have the package with me, but I believe it's 5,500 watts, and it says it's <laughs> designed to be run on 240. Now, I don't have 240 supply to power to it, so it's going to be run on 120, which I believe, I went to ask my brother who's an electrical engineer, but I believe that just means it'll operate at half heat, so 2,500 watts or whatever, 2,750. Um, <coughs> other than that, it shouldn't really hurt, it's just a matter of how much power it's going to it. So anyway, just electric heating element and what I did was uh, I already glued this elbow I should have started the video sooner and showed you guys but what you have to do is you have to find a bushing that has a one inch female thread and then you want you know a bigger slip outside of that so since I'm using two inch piping in all of my system I got lucky and found a one inch female thread by two inch slit bushing so where you can see the purple primer in there, that's where I've got that bushing glued in. And there's the uh, head of the heater element. So what you do is you just tape up the threads on your heating element. And um, I know this is a horrible video, I apologize. I should have laid all this out, but it was a last minute thought. Tape the threads on your heating element. It's got a rubber gasket on as well that comes with it. Leave that on there. Thread it into your female end of your bushing. And uh, torque it down good and tight and then just slip your bushing into the female end of your pipe here. Now, you want to use a cross pipe or a Y pipe, something that's going to direct water flow across this. So, you know, <coughs> don't just stick it in the butt end of a piece of pipe because you want water flowing across it. That's what makes it so efficient. Um, and you can see down inside of here now, I think you can see down inside there. Let me turn my headlamp on. See if that'll help. Okay, so you can see down inside there, what's, what's key is you can't have this metal element touching itself anywhere, and you can't have it touching the plastic. So, um, you can see I've got a little bit of clearance there, at least a quarter inch of clearance between the element and the uh, plastic down there in the bottom where it folds back on itself. If you can find a straight element that's not bent around like this, that'll help a lot. Um, but all I could find <coughs> was this bent one. I got this at Home Depot. Um, and also, it's got this special coating on it. It's called an Incoli coating or Incoloy coating. And uh, you definitely want to have that because it makes this element a lot more resistant to uh, minerals and stuff like that, which in a you know aquaculture or an aquaponics system, you're likely to have a lot of mineral exposure. So this sh should last a lot longer. Uh, but like any good element, it's going to wear out eventually. Anyway, so thread that in there. And just make sure before you glue anything up, make sure you have clearance. Make sure nothing's touching itself. Um, <laughs> and then slip it in, glue it in. Now what you have to do is that bushing has a hexagon, uh, big squared edges on it so that you know you can grab it with a pair of pliers and turn it. It's designed to be threaded in or designed to be able to let you get a bite on it while you thread something else in. But you have to be able to put this slip fitting over it. So you take that hexagon edge and sand it off to where it's smooth. So you have basically a slip by slip bushing with the threads inside. So you sand it off, try to make it as fine as a finish as you can because that is a glue joint, so you want to be as close to act you know, as close to right as possible. Um, so I just sanded mine off using the, the uh, bench sander and then primed it all up really good, made it as clean as I could, and uh, glued the ever living crap out of it. So I glued inside the joint and then I went <laughs> I went all the way around the outside here and just smeared glue in there real thick. It's still kind of wet because I put it on so thick. I just want to glue, glue as much as I can because what's critical is <coughs> this is your seal between water and electricity. So you don't want water getting in there at all. And that goes on back up. You know, next thing I'll put in here, I'll put a bushing in here that's going to adapt me from two inch to inch and a half and then an inch and a half elbow and uh, then a standpipe. So my wire will be right inside of that as a conduit to keep your wire up out of the water. And then water will flow, for what I'm doing, water's going to flow this direction across the element and flow out the top here. Others, uh, sorry about that. Water will flow uh, 
in here and out the side. I'm going to turn it sideways. And water's just going to flow across it just because it has to for the system to be um, equalized. I've seen others have it where the water flowed in the top of the element up here and swept down across. You guys are probably wondering about the hole. That is just in case. Just in case there's any stale water that wants to build up in this back area of this elbow, that hole will give it a place to go. So for my case, water's going to flow this way. If any stale water were to try to build up in there, it won't because instead it will just squirt out through that hole. So uh, that'll keep you from having a hot spot in your water, um, which I don't think it'll matter anyway because there's such a high volume of water across the way here. I don't think it will be concerned, but it's a good safety backup. So <laughs> let me, uh, I'll just piece together the rest of it real quick. I'm not going to glue it yet because I've got to get some electric grease to put on that fitting there. Um, so let me just piece it together and then y'all see what I'm talking about as far as the finished product. Alright, so here's the more or less finished product just so y'all can get a, a full idea. So you can see now the, the wire and all the electricals is completely <coughs> encased inside the uh, vertical standpipe here. And again, in my case, water is going to flow in here coming from the first sump. When it comes through the coming through the cross pipe that brings from the first sump to the second sump, water's going to flow through here and then flow across. So this is going to be stood up vertical just like this. So water is not really flowing under any real gravity force other than that it's always wanting to it's always wanting to <laughs> equalize and you know find its own height. And since water is coming from the first sump, or since, since the pump is pulling out of the second sump, water is always going to want to flow from the first sump into the second sump. So again you can see my little weep hole there just in case there's any stale water. And like I said, right now none of this is glued up because I got to get my electric grease and uh, fix up the wires inside there first, grease all that up, and then I'll glue the ever living crap out of it. Anyway, this whole rig, well then it's going to set right in this barrel, and I'll show you, let me hop up there, and I'll show you where it sits down inside. Uh, oh, it's dark. It's dark as crap in here. Okay, so see there's where the cross pipe comes through from the first sump. So you see the, again, going through the system, water comes in the swirl filter goes into the biofilter, flows over into the first sump, flows into the second sump through that cross pipe and then down there that bottom pipe, that's where water is pulling out and going down into the pump. So I'm just going to plug it in right there so that as water comes through that pipe it'll flow through and flow out and that'll work to uh, heat the whole system. Let me uh, let me go in the house and I'll get you, I'll show you all the heating element that I'm going to use. That water looks pretty dingy, doesn't it? Nasty and all that plastic floating. I've got a got to get a uh, filter pad put in here, my spoil filter, to keep the crap from passing through it. Because now that the fish are in here and feeding them a lot, there's a lot of crap in there. Anyway, <coughs> Peter. Alright, and so this is the heating element that we're going to be using. This is a Ranco uh, ETC 111, we'll just say 111, or 111,000, whatever you're going to say, ETC 111. Um, and it was assembled in Mexico, apparently. Anyway, real simple device. Um, I haven't actually hooked it up or programmed it yet, but my understanding is that it's real simple. You've got a temperature probe here on the end of this wire, which is a good long wire. And, uh, <coughs> and then you're just able to set it. It's got a digital display. Um, your, wire, your actual power wires are going to plug into the bottom in here. Um, but you just... Rig it up, set whatever temperature you want, and from what I can understand, you can actually set a range. So, you know, for the sake of these fish, I could set the range to say 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit if that's what I want to do, or I could tell it right on 79, you know, whatever. Um, and it's just a simple, you know, normal open, um, I guess it'd be normal closed, I believe, normal closed system to where it's not going to be running <coughs> unless this temperature probe indicates you know it measures and says that um, if it measures and says that the temperature coming into the across the probe is not as high as it's supposed to be because we're in heating mode then it's going to kick this thing on and turn on the heater element and start heating up the water so um, you can use this same device for a cooling system if you wanted to um, you just it's a matter of you tell it you know whether you want it to kick on high side or low side so in the event of cooling, you would tell it, you know, the temperature probe would be seeking for temperature to be higher than you're setting, and if it was, then it would kick on and it would 
power up a you know cooling unit, whatever you had, a fan or um, you know a, an air conditioning compression unit or whatever, refrigeration unit. So anyway, we're using it for heating. Should be pretty simple. I think I picked it up on Amazon. I want to say it's about 50 bucks. Um, no big deal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll get it all uh, glued up. Hopefully. Um, soon here and uh, we'll get it all put together and get it installed and uh, get it running and we need it because it's been getting down getting down to uh, the low 40s for the next couple nights and uh, highs are only in uh, like the upper 50s which is that's about as cold as it gets down here in Houston for the most part you know unless we have a freakishly cold day where it gets down to like 30 degrees but other than that I mean that's still cold because my fish room is not insulated the tanks aren't insulated so I'm gonna have to get some heat on them so anyway Cut it off for now and uh, I'll finish it off with everything finished up and installed. Well, there you go. The uh, heater pipe has been installed and it's running. So the water's flowing in through here and the heating coils are inside that pipe and then the water's flowing out through that elbow. It's just the only reason for that is just to direct some kind of flow. The wiring comes up through this standpipe, comes out the top here, it's well above the fluid level and runs into our little controller box here. And inside the controller box, everything's hooked up, and our green wire, just an extension cord that I had, cut the end off of it, use that for the power wire. So power is delivered through here, it's controlled through here, and it's sent down here to go to the heater. This little box, I like it. It's uh, super easy, super intuitive. I was able to program the thing without even reading the directions. Just hit the set button a bunch of times and tell it what you want it to do. Uh, but I did, I, I felt down in there, and I can feel little bits of warm water coming out. It doesn't feel like a consistent warm flow, and I'm thinking that's maybe just because of how that controller regulates the uh, heating coils. And it could also be because those heating coils are designed for a 240 supply and it's only 120, so it might be that something to do with that. You know, basically that 120 power is just not delivering enough power to the coils, I don't really know. But you can feel warmth coming out of it, so that is a good sign, I guess. Um, oh, and then of course the temperature probe is just dropped down in that barrel there. So it senses the temperature coming into the heating coils tells it if it's too cold you just turn the coils off so that makes sense you wouldn't want to put your coils past the heater because then every time it catch a little bit of warm water shut the coil off you don't necessarily want that to happen um, yeah it's on and run it was it was easy I uh, I looked at the directions said I got this came out wired it had it wired completely wrong so I plugged it in and everything came on it looked fine and then I realized that the programmer here was set in cooling mode and not heating mode. So it was saying, hey, well, your water's 72 and you want it to be 80. We're good. And I was like, wait a minute, something's not right. And so then I read the directions and realized I had to switch to heat mode. As soon as I switched to heat mode, it killed everything. It shorted out on the inside, <laughs> killed the entire fish room. So, uh, but no big deal. I got the directions, realized what I'd done wrong, wired it back up right, and now it's on and running. So, cross our fingers. I'm going to bed and I hope to come out here in the morning and see that the temperature's actually a little bit warmer. And I don't know. It's, it's chilly tonight. It's down in the 40s, so I don't know. This might be all this thing can do just to keep up overnight. Maybe it won't get as cold, but we'll see. Well, well, well. It's the morning after the install. The heater's been running now for uh, in the six, about eight hours, and um, it's brought the temperature up four and a half degrees in the water. And I know it's not because it warmed up outside. Cause it's cold outside this morning. The rain last night is probably. Uh, 45 or 50 degrees outside at best if I had to guess. So it's got to be that heater working. So that's a good deal. And uh, this thermometer saying 76 and that one up there saying 76 too. So they agree it's good. But still on, it's still running because it's got to try to get it up to 80. 